Hey there, this is Brian Grant with CSG Pro, and in this video we're going to be looking at doing running totals in M using the list.accumulate function. Let's go get started with that. We're going to head up to Edit Queries, and we're going to assume that we have a table, and let's just say our table, I don't know, looks like this. And what we want to have is we want to have running totals, right? So we want to have, for the first day it'll be 125, and then for day two it'll be 175 plus 125, for day three, it'll be 110 plus 175 plus 125, and so on and so forth. So for each day, you get the you know the the total for that day and all the days before it. Okay, a running total. Now, there's a tried and true way to do this, which works pretty well. I read about it in Chris Webb's book, which is an excellent book, by the way, if you get a chance. Um, and what you do is you add an index column, right? I'm not going to go through this in depth, but then you uh, use a function or you you create a custom column which goes and grabs the sales column from this previous step. Right, so if we go back here, we take this column here in this step and add it as a, you know, one per row in this step. Right, so you can see down there, it's all the same thing. And then you add uh, this range where you say, okay, uh, for each row, go get um, this many items from the list. So in the first row, we get one item, we get that. Second row, we get two items, we get that, and you know, third row, we get three items. And then finally, we say, okay, now that you've got, you know, one, two, three items for this third row, go ahead and just sum up this list, and you end up getting running totals. And that works just fine. Um, in fact, it works great. It's a pretty cool solution. The only bummer with it is if you think about how it's working, um, when it generates, like, let's go here. This is a more interesting one. When it sums up these two numbers, it gets 300 right there. When it goes to uh, sum up this list, it throws away that 300. It basically starts over, so it has to add three whole numbers together, right? And here we're going to add, you know, uh, four whole numbers together. So if you think about like a million rows, uh, you're sort of replicating a lot of effort, right? Uh, so you'd like it so rather than you know um, each time having to start over for fresh, you'd like to sort of accumulate. So you'd like sort of uh, something where it says, you know, get this number, then you know. Use this number to inform this number right here. Then use this number to inform that number right there. And that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to use list.accumulate to do it. Um, this isn't necessarily maybe even the best use of list.accumulate. I don't know what the best list uh, use is. But it's a very cool function. And this is a, a good way to sort of get yourself used to it and see some of its power. Okay. Oh, I was supposed to delete all this stuff. Let me go do that right now. I'm going to delete until end. So when you start, it should look something like this, right? So uh, the first thing, first thing we're going to do is, uh, well, actually, why don't I walk you through it real quick, just because this is a hard one. So I want you guys to see what the steps are, right? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the sales column list, right? So we're going to go up to the change type. We're just going to extract this column as a list. That's going to be our step, okay? Uh, since this is a list, we're going to say, all right, we're going to use some fancy uh, M, which I'll show you, to turn this into a running total list, right? So... Here was the list before, 125, 175. If you add those together, it's 300. And now it's a running total list where you can see, oh, 125 plus 175, yep, that's 300. And, you know, if you want to rewind the video, you can see that, yes, this is indeed a running total. Then what we do is we we say, all right, now that we've got our list, we're going to take this step here and sort of pull it forward. This step's just going to reference this step, right? So it's going to sort of go, it's going to pull this forward, boop. So this step and this step are the same thing. And now we say, okay, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and add an index, right? And now that we've got an index, we're going to be able to, uh, one by one, pull the item from that running total list and populate our table with it. So, you know, uh, row one will say, grab the first item in the list and put it there. Row two will say, grab the uh, position one item in the list and put it there. Row three will say, grab the position two item in the list and put it there. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So, let's do that. So, uh, item one, we're going to head over to change type, we're going to right click, and we're going to insert a step, right? And so why are we going to insert a step? Well, because, uh, you know, we're going to uh, do something you don't normally do here in M. We're going to go ahead and uh, rather than creating a table, we're going to create a list. So uh, we could just go get the step we had before, change type. But if we uh, append our, uh, our M code here with sales, like that in these square brackets, it's going to say, oh, you don't want the change type, just the table. You want the sales column from that table. And it's going to return it as a list. Okay. So now we've got the sales column as a list. All right. Now let's change, let's give ourselves a better name here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit rename. And I'm going to call this sales 
column list and hit enter. Okay, so uh, the next we're going to do is the, well, it's the hard part. So we're going to go ahead and add our running totals, okay? So uh, once again, I'm going to right-click and do uh, insert step after, right? And so the step's just going to start by grabbing the step before, just that list. Um, now, before we actually do this, I want you to walk, I'm going to walk you through the algorithm of how this thing's going to work, right? So, um, in fact, why don't I, you know what, I will write it first, and then I'll walk you through it. I think that's going to make more sense. So, uh, what we're going to do here is, um, we're, we're just going to go ahead and start by deleting this. Remember, it's sales column list is a step before, and we're going to do a list dot accumulate. And list dot accumulate is a very cool function. What it does is it takes a list, right? One, two, three, four, and it basically will go through that list and create a new list, um, sort of accumulating things, uh, you know, through each pass, right? So it sort of has this. I imagine like a like a, you know, a big old ball of gum, right? And so each time you go through the initial list, you sort of add something to your new big ball of gum until you, you get something completely different, okay? So uh, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I'm going to show you in Excel uh, what, what it sort of does. So list out accumulate. Okay, so first we're going to have to add what's the list that we're going to um, iterate over or go one by one over. Well, it's going to be the sales column list, right? So, okay, so now that we've defined our initial list, we have to define this, uh, this wad of, uh, you know, this big ball of gum or this, this uh, bucket that we're going to keep adding to, right? And so we're going to say, all right, we're going to start with this seed, is what they call it. And it's going to be a list that just has one item in it. It's going to be uh, the number zero, okay? Can't be blank. I tried it that way. It doesn't work. So, okay, so, no, oop, sorry, I didn't mean to hit enter. What I meant to hit was shift enter. One, two, three, four. So now that we've got our, our seed, Right, so this is this is the list that, or this is the list that we're going to iterate over. This is the object that we're going to keep adding to. Right, we're going to say, okay, we have to define two things. For each uh, time we go over an item in the list, for each step, we're going to get what the the object is so far, right? And we're also going to have the that particular item for that row from the sales column. So we're going to say this step. Okay, so we're going to say, all right. We're going to pass those two things as an argument. So, for each step, we're going to have you know what the what the object is so far, and then the the item from the current. I mean, it's not really a row in a list, but the current you know uh, position in the list, right, being passed in. So, shift enter, three four. So, uh, each time we go through, we're going to take the results so far, right, which right now it starts off as this you know this list with an item in it, right, and we're going to shift enter one two three four. We're going to append, we're going to add uh, an item to that list, right? So we're going to sort of take uh, two lists and add, and add the second one to the first one. Okay, so well, what's the second item in the list? The second item in the list is going to be, uh, open parentheses, the list.last, list.last of so far, right? And close parentheses, plus the this step. Okay, and close parentheses and shift enter, and I think I could close that out, and I think that's correct. Let's see, can I? Doop, 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 doop. Let's see, I think that should be right. So we hit enter. Oops, we cannot apply ampersand, list and number. Oh, I'm sorry. Those aren't parentheses, those are curly braces, right? Okay, so uh, imagine that uh, so far this uh, seed object, it's always going to be a list, right? Because we started it off as a list. So when we make our first pass through, we're going to say, okay, we're going to take this list so far, which is just this right now, right? And we're going to uh, take another list and sort of append it to that list. Well, what's the second list? We'll go get the last item in the list so far and add whatever the, the sales is for the current row to that list, right? Okay, so now when we hit enter, should get, our, should get the results that we want. So we end up with 0, 125, 300, 410, and 600. Okay. Now, uh, this is actually the result I want, except we've got this 0 up here at the top, which we don't like. A couple ways to get rid of that. I'm going to do the lazy way, where I'm just going to head up here to the top of my function. I'm just going to do list.skip, which basically just says, hey, get rid of the first item in the list. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, close that parentheses out. I could be fancier with white space, but I think that's going to work right now. And I hit enter. Boom. Okay, so now we've got our running total. Okay, so here was our list before, and here's our running total. So how did all that stuff work? 
uh, what did that look like? Well, let's head over here to Excel and let's let's sort of step through this, right? Here's the the function I just wrote, uh, more or less, very close. And so what happens is we've got our sales column, right, as a list, and we're going to go through uh, each item in this list: one, two, three, four. Each time through, I'm going to call it a pass, right? And we start with this seed, okay? And so for each pass, like we can imagine here in pass one, we take what we've got so far, which just starts off as the seed, right? Because nothing's been done to it yet. We then say, all right, we've got our, our list so far. We get the list.last of so far. All right, what's the last item in this list? Well, there's only one item in it, so it's zero. That zero comes down here. We get what this item is, right? Because we're in pass one, this item is 125. So we take zero plus 125. 0 plus 125 equals, well, 125. And then we append this number to what we had so far. So we take the 125 and we kind of stick it onto the end of there. So we end up with 0, 125. Now the list has two items in it. Okay, pass 2. We're no longer in pass 1. We're in pass 2 right there. So for pass 2, we, uh, we start off with the list so far, which is now 0, 125, because that's what it was at the end of pass 1. We say, all right, what's the, uh, the list.last of so far? Well, now uh, there's two items in the list, and the last item is 125. So now this is 125, the list.last. We take 125, and we add it to this item. Well, because we're in pass 2, this item is now 175, right there. 125 plus 175 boom, boom, equals 300. We append this number to what was so far. So we take it and just sort of stick it up there and we end up with a new so far, right? So we now take this, go into pass three. We've got a new so far. What's the last item in so far? Well, now it's got three items in it, so it's 300. What's this item? Well, we're in pass three, so it's 110, right? And so we say, all right, we take 110, add it to 300 and end up with 410 right there. And we stick it onto the end of so far to come up with our new so far, all right? So for pass four, now we're in pass four. So far is what it was at the end of pass three. We get the last item in it. It's 410. So all right, take 410, add it to 190, because this item in pass four is 190. And we say, all right, 410 plus 190 equals 600. And then we take this number and we append it to the end of our list. So we get 0, 125, 300, 410, and 600. And we get uh, this list right here, which is perfect except for this little, uh, we want to get rid of this thing, our seed, right? We want to uh, get rid of that. So we use list.skip to just sort of, uh, you know, cut off the beginning of our list. And that is how list.accumulate works, okay? Now that's the hard stuff. It's a very cool function. You can do a lot of stuff with it. So uh, now that we've got our list, uh, well, the first thing I'm going to do is rename this step. So we're going to call this uh, running, I'm going to call this actually just uh, RT list, right? Okay, so now that we've got our running total list, we want to stick this onto the end of this table, okay? Well, we can't completely do that, but what we can do is we could take this step and sort of bring it out front. So I'm going to do a insert step after and say, hey, instead of getting the last step, go back a couple and get the change type step. So to do that, I'm just going to come back. Since there's a space in change type, I have to do it this way. I do my little pound symbol changed type, close my uh, quotation marks, and hit enter. Okay, so now I've taken the change step and sort of moved it forward, so I'm going to rename this to FFW for fast forward, or what is it? FWD, I don't know, fast forward, change to type, right? Bring the change type step forward, okay? So now we're going to say, let's add an index column, so we're going to add a column. We're going to add uh, an index column, and we're going to do uh, a zero-based index column, so from zero. Okay, go ahead, hit enter right there. We're not going to bother to rename this because it's only going to be around for a minute. And so now what we could say is uh, we've got this running total list right here, right? And for the for the final table, for row one, we want to get the first item from the list, right? And this is position zero in the table, and that's exactly what it says here for the index. Okay, so for uh, so for Row two, we want to go to our running total list and get the second item in the list or the item at position one in the list. And that's what the index is here, right? And so, so on and so forth. So now all we have to do is we go to add column. We're going to add a custom column. I'm going to call this running total, right? And what I do is I say, okay, go uh, get the, the list of RT list, 
I don't think I need to qualify that RT list because there's no spaces in RT list. I don't need to wrap the little uh, pound sign and, and quotation marks around it. So go get RT list. Uh, now I'm just going to hit OK. I'm not done yet, but I just want to see if that's all I did, I would get the list, right? So I get the list 125 through 600 right there, 125 through 600. OK. And so for this one, I want to get position 0. We'll index as 0 right there. For this one, I want to get position 1. Well, it says 1 right there. For this one, I want to get position 2. Well, it says 2 right there. So all I have to do is change this to say, all right, don't bring back the entire list. Just bring back one item from the list. Oh, do you want to bring back the item in the first position? Do you want to bring it back in the second position? No, I think for each row, I want you to use the, the position I want to get is here in the index column, right? So for position, or for row 1, it's going to be 0. For row 1, for row 2, it's going to be 1. For row 3, it's going to be 2, and so on and so forth. So now I hit OK. And boom, I've got my running total column, right? So I come over here, right click, and I'm going to hit change that to add RT, or running total, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go ahead and delete my index column. And I guess just for good measure, I'm going to change this to a fixed decimal number. But uh, more or less, that's it. I am all done. Okay, uh, this is uh, definitely an advanced video, um, but I think it's worth it because that list.accumulate function, boy, there's just a whole lot of different really powerful stuff you could do with that. Okay, well, I sure hope that video was helpful. Until next time, keep on powering on.